Speaking of Disney, that brings us to our next subject, which is the finances. And Marvel and Disney is a big uproar today in the stock market. We're going to be reviewing the Robinhood app. And in reviewing this app, I'm going to go ahead and click on it and show you guys the screen here. We had a question, too, from uh, we had a question too from uh, from Howard McQuarters about Berkshire Hathaway selling its airline stock. So you might want to touch on that. I, this I will. I will. I will. We're going to be doing a giveaway to two people, T Streams and me, who download the Robinhood app. The link is in the video description. And we're going to randomly pick two individuals. And you guys are going to get $500 to be used to invest, particularly in this app, because we want to track you and see what happens. You cool with that, T Streams? I'm good. He's good. <laughs> so this this thing that you're seeing on the screen is the Robin Hood app. It is a free app that allows you to make trades, buy and sell stock seamlessly. And one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about Disney is because all the analysts are saying that Disney is going to tank to about $95. And when it gets to that point, you need to buy yourself a whole bunch of it. The reason they're estimating it's going to tank is because Disney theme parks are not opening up at all this year. They're done. But what is driving revenue is the success of Disney Plus. Did and they already call the whole year for the for the parks? Pretty much, man. In America, anyway, pretty much. Now, not- you hit something about NBA playing there or something? Yeah, and, and they're going. The NBA is debating: Are they going to play without people watching in some of their theme parks and studios? Um, it's folks, wow. it's, it's crazy out here. But once you get the Robin Hood app, it allows you to keep up with what your stocks are doing. And you can see other stocks. You can create a playlist, which is right here, for example, with Disney. And what I always tell people to do whenever they're thinking about buying a stock, always go down here and check what it's done over the course of time. First thing I click on is the five year button. And in the last five years, if you take Disney as a particular stock, it's lost 8.4%, which is $9. It's lost $9, it's not bad. And in the last year, it's lost 22%, that's horrible. And then in three year, three month period, it's lost 40%. And you guys know that's mainly because of coronavirus. And the other thing I encourage people to do, when you do buy stocks, you also want to leverage your stocks with government bonds such as this one right here that i have which is a u.s treasury bond and when you check on this five-year status it stayed in the green 11 percent gain so you want to leverage the riskier stocks with i bonds such as this treasury bonds such as this and to answer my man mcquarter's question one of the reasons why people are selling airline stock is because my man warren buffett jumped off all of them. He jumped off all of them. And last week it was said that American Airlines is probably going to wind up tanking down by the end of this week to a dollar. And last I checked, it was right at 11 bucks. So anybody that's got money in American Airlines, you're about to lose money. However, American Airlines is not the only game in town. You do got Southwest, who is the number one domestic flyer in America. You still have Boeing who just spent a lot of money to buy new jets. And anytime a company invests capital into equipment, that's a sign that they know something is coming in the future. So maybe it was more so that Warren Buffett doesn't believe in American Airlines and Delta as you have some of the other ones. Um, t If they take down to a dollar, I'm buying them at a dollar because American Airlines assets are worth more than a dollar a share. And I mean, if they just and, were sold off. Just their physical assets are worth more than that. But the thing is, you don't know someone might come in and buy and reallocate those assets from American Airlines, you know, and absorb all that. But I will say this. They are talking about of all the airlines, American Airlines specifically could be getting its own stimulus package. Hmm. hmm. It's the weakest weakest out of all of them. And a lot of news was rumbling last week that they could be getting their own stimulus package, especially if they wind up stock prices drop to a dollar. 
There's been talk that there, there's been talk that I've heard that the people have been saying it's time to nationalize our airlines. And I know that people in this country have a real, you know, have a real adverse, uh, uh, yeah, you know, effect to, to socializing anything. But we do already in a certain sense where, I mean, not totally socialize, you're not totally, you know, socialized it. But I mean, when you look at stuff like our utilities, that stuff is highly, highly regulated by the government. You, and right. I think if I think if they did something like that with the airlines, it might provide the airlines some protection at a certain level. It'll provide the consumers some protection. It may actually protect the industry. The but, problem, the problem with that is you've got too many other players who feel like they're doing well enough that they're not gonna wanna see the government take one of those airlines. Let's say they did nationalize American Airlines, then you're gonna feel like probably the other airlines are going to feel like the government is going to make their airline in a manner where they can't compete with it. Right. To, to yeah, that would degree. probably happen on some level. There would be a lot of price controls there. Right. So I, I do, I mean, I don't see the, I don't see the airline lobby allowing that to happen. Not with who we have in the White House now, for sure. And if right. this person gets reelected, it definitely ain't going to happen. Yeah. But the problem, the problem with the airlines is that they've already, they've already talked about that that they're not going to get back to normal flying and normal, you know, normal capacities for, it's going, I mean, uh, they, they said it could be, it could be upwards of a year before they can right. even consider going back to the normal flight capacities. Mm -hmm. And some of these I mean, flights they haven't been adhering to the social distancing thing where they've been packing these flights when they're not supposed to. Right. You know, but it, I can see why he would. I can see why he would dump them because because Warren Buffett, he, it, you know, anybody who's listened to Warren Buffett or read any of his stuff, Warren Buffett is not a day trader. A lot often, type people are looking for those these quick, you know, what should I buy now? What should I sell now? Warren Buffett is someone who who very much advocates buying and selling with long term interest in mind. And, he and I'm the same exact way. Same and if he doesn't way. see if he's selling his airline stocks, is because he does not see that this is a good long term prospect. Mm -hmm. You know, not right so. now, anyway. T. Strings, drop some knowledge on it. What stocks do you like? What companies do you feel like you could bank on if you had to buy a stock today? Man, honestly, man, right now, I think some 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 good things to get off into is is stuff like cleaning supplies and and chemical companies. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I've been checking some of them out through mutual funds. And so the, for those that don't know uh, the difference between stocks and mutuals, uh, stocks are more so single. Mm -hmm. So you buy a single stock and whereas mutual funds, you you buy a group, you know, there's a group of them inside of that actual mutual fund. So. So um, I think that's a, that's an actual that's an actual strong point, and uh, things that you know you you see you you can visually look at the the current state of the economy and see what's actually going strong. Mm -hmm. Walmart, Target, you know these places that that why everything else is you know Amazon, why everything else is sort of shut down and deplete. Now of course stuff like that is you know. It's probably not a, an actual good time to buy because some of those things are extremely high now. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those who who did get a piece of you know who did get a piece of that pie when it was when it was manageable, uh, probably sitting there with smiling faces right now. Um, but I, I think that's that's to go around. But then on the on the flip side, on the flip side too, there there there's also a flip conundrum to this here. If you have you know, if you have the uh, the extra cash to to say, you know, invest a few hundred here, a few hundred there or something like that, maybe it's good to look at some things that that are, you know, inherently that's still sticking around. But, you know, that's on the low end right now, but are are definitely livelihood essentials that, you know, we're not going to get away you know that's just going to disappear and go away these things that are going to come back and as soon as uh as soon as things are actually open for the you know for the for the rebound they're probably going to catch and go straight you know straight back up and that was one of the things i was sharing you know was sharing with my with my wife i said well maybe we can take 
maybe we could take some cash and get something that's that's an already you know that's an already tanked and that's right here at the bottom mm-hmm. we know that it's not we know for a fact it's not going to stay there as soon as things curve back around so so we so so you you know take some money set it to the side and just don't even don't even look at it don't even follow it for the next several months let it go up and down up and down up and down like it's going to do and then you know we'll take a look we'll take a look back at it 18 24 months from now and see you know see you know see see if that thousand dollars was was actually you know you know worth it to see you know to see if there was some some change um so so i so those are the you know that would be the the two directions that i would you know that i would actually look at but then again i'm a little bit more i'm a little bit more spontaneously risky than (laughs) than, you 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 are but what you do that's smart is you're leveraging the riskiness with etfs and that's why i tell everybody if you alert if you're gonna allot a pile of money take half of it and invest it in something safe like the bonds i sold you or etl Mm -hmm. then take the rest and invest in a company you like and i give you guys another stock tip um i did a video about it but i just haven't showed you the results y'all know i own a tesla that stock is as hot as ice cream on a sunday in the summer in the south i bought it when the crash first hit last month for 490 bucks here we are in May, and the stock is sitting at $710 a month later. A wow. month later. The number <laughs> one vo- the number one voice in electronic cars is Tesla. But this is what a lot of people don't know. They're also the number one voice for car manufacturers making self-driving cars. So not only are they selling electric Teslas, but they're also making money off the patent that Tesla has for their self-driving technology that they are in negotiations with right now to put in electric Fords, to put in some of the manufacturer who's trying to do deals with Uber. Grab you some Tesla right now while some of the plants are shut down. If you can afford $700, get a few and sit on it. And we're gonna have to come back and have this discussion Christmas time. I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. Yeah. You know, J. Crew or not? Yeah, J. Crew just uh, filed for bankruptcy, so it yeah. might be a good time to start shorting retail stocks. But I yeah. mean, that that could be a little risky. But I mean, there's 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 an upside if you get it right. But if you if, know, some of these retailers out there, places you know, places like J. Crew and and yeah, and Old Navy, places that are dependent upon you going in and shopping and and buying, you know, trying stuff on stuff like those those places are getting hit real hard and they're going to continue to get hit really hard so to to expand on what larry is saying yes they they are tanking badly but people that you would want to invest money in that is a retailer any retailer that has a strong online presence um well that's why i was saying short them right right any one of those people that have beefed up their online presence is definitely one you want to buy stock in especially maybe around September, right before the Christmas push. Because even if we still can't go shopping, people still gonna get Christmas gift. They're just gonna have to order it online. So you think about a lot of your online retailers who do big business, even some of your warehouse stores. Costco is doing great. Um, Sam's Club is doing great, but they're are, they are in-house with Walmart. So think of some of those stocks and go on ahead and get you some and just ride it out in the sunset. Man, right. have we, also, we also have to consider. Go ahead. I'm sorry. T, I'm sorry, T. Go ahead. I was, I was just, I was just looking at, and I just pulled up a couple of stocks, and I, I pulled Walmart. At Walmart was at, was at a, uh, was at 123, uh, 123 dollars uh, mm-hmm. per stock. And I had, had anybody uh, took a look at what Amazon's was. Oh my God! I, I know. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. They are they are killing right now. Killing Amazon it. is over twenty three hundred. Killing it. And last year at this time they was like twelve hundred. Yeah, man. So yeah, I, I you know.